It's back, FrameGUI version 2 is now here and free for everyone. In this video, we will briefly go over the new features and advancements from the old versions and I'll also provide a usage guide covering all of the features. Let's get started. FrameGUI is based off in CodeGUI, which is a more comprehensive utility for more advanced users. I've completely redesigned the layout of FrameGUI and made the configuration settings more user-friendly so that anyone, regardless of encoding experience, can get started in just a few clicks. Start by downloading the setup file by going to encodegui.com slash downloads.html. Currently, FrameGUI is only available on Windows 10 or Windows 11 OSs, but support for other OSs will come very soon. Select either the free download or subscribe to get the latest updates via early access for both FrameGUI and EncodeGUI for only $5 a month USD. Regardless of which download you select, you will be able to follow all the steps in this guide without limitations. Upon opening the application, first select the source video by clicking the Select Input button and then selecting the file you want to modify. Alternatively, you could also drag and drop a video into the app and it will be automatically loaded. The first option we have in the settings page is the encoding preference and you can select one of the two options shown on screen. The first option is for a faster render but will consist of a larger output file, whereas the second option will render slower but will have a smaller output file. Regardless of which option you select, you will still get a high quality video. The next option is frame interpolation or more simply, converting FPS. This function uses Rife Artificial Intelligence Model Version 4.6. Enabling it will unlock the FPS selector and you could set it to whatever you would like. The next option is upscaling and it utilizes the SRMD Super Resolution AI tools. In order to enable this tool, you must have the Convert FPS function disabled as you can't have both filters enabled at once due to software and hardware limitations. For this, simply select the output resolution. The aspect ratio of your video will remain unchanged. Now we want to select the destination for our output video. To do this, select the save output button and this will open a file dialog allowing you to set a name and destination for the video. Next, you will want to select the output container. MP4 is a popular option, but I recommend MKV since it has the widest support across video, audio, and subtitle codecs. Speaking of that, any audio, subtitles, and chapters are automatically passed through in frame GUI. Now that all of our settings have been configured, we can now select the Add Job button and this will add a job with all of the settings you just configured into the queue. Nothing will happen until you select the Start button, which will start the first job that has a status of waiting. You can right click a job in the menu to see additional options and you also have some options for the current running job on the main page. If in the case you receive an error sometime during the render, first read the error and if you can't solve the problem after attempting to do so on your own, reach out to me with a copy of the log files associated to the job that failed. You can access the logs by right clicking the failed job and then selecting open logs path. There, you should see two files. Copy both of them and send them in the help channel of the Discord server or you can open an issue on GitHub. Please understand that I can't help you at all unless you have sent the log files of the failed job. I also won't provide support in the comments section of this video. I hope you find this video useful for your needs and if you want to find out more info, you could do so by navigating to the frame GUI docs on encodegui.com slash docs slash documentation.html. You can also subscribe as a patron for FrameGUI and EncodeGUI to get early access to updates, enhanced support, and a dedicated role in this channel's Discord server. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.